Our next guest is a leader of the cashless payment revolution. Joining us right now is PayPal CEO Dan Schulman. And uh, Dan, thank you for being here today. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me, Becky. I know you're in a quiet period, uh, so you can't give us specific numbers in terms of transactions over the holiday period. But can you tell us broadly how you think the consumer is doing based on the numbers that you're seeing at PayPal? Yeah. I think the holiday period was a strong period uh, in general uh, across the world. And I think what was really interesting in the holiday period was the advent of mobile payments. You saw for the first time mobile payments, actually more than half of all of e-commerce payments. Wow. And for the first time ever, e-commerce was over 50% of the sales in the holiday period. So last year you saw that just on Black Friday weekend. This time you saw it over the whole holiday period. I mean, that's, it's period. not 50% of all retail sales numbers. Not including of retail cars, sales. Not including cars and other things. You're talking about retail sales. Retail sales yeah. at, at stores. At stores. Exactly. But that's a massive move towards online sales. And we're obviously a beneficiary of the, that tailwind that goes on. You know, there are a lot of co competitors who are kind of springing up, too. You've branched out and are doing all kinds of things like Venmo. But we had uh, Brian Moynihan from Bank of America on earlier today. They have Zelle that they and other banks are, are behind, and they, their transactions are soaring, too. I think they were up 91 percent in the yeah. fourth quarter. Um, wh wh where do you think the future is headed, and how do you deal with all these new competitors uh, that are later to the game than you were? Yeah. Well, I think there are two broad trends that are going on right now. One is the digitization of money. We're all seeing that happen as people are moving more and more towards online, less checks are being cashed, that kind of thing, and the explosion of mobile. Those two tailwinds are fueling digital payments, whether they be online or mobile. And when you think about things like P2P, P2P is about a 35 Which is person peer, to person, peer to peer. Person, like, a, yeah, like, a, like a Venmo. Like a if Venmo I'm you, or Zelle, as you were right. mentioning before. That's about a $35 billion industry right now. Mm -hmm. In the next three to five years, that's um, supposed to go to almost $300 billion. When you say $35 billion, that's in revenue? In revenue. To the business? Yeah. How are you collecting money on Venmo right now? Venmo right now is just peer-to-peer uh, peer peer -peer. that goes on. And so the way that so we're collecting no money, we're just starting to right. monetize it now by allowing Venmo users to start to uh, uh, basically click on any button where PayPal is accepted and then make a purchase that way. So just like PayPal started off as peer-to-peer, -peer, it's exact same metaphor for Venmo. Right. We started monetizing PayPal through merchants, we're doing exactly the same thing with Venmo. We ask every guest about uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, but you may actually have a uh, more authority on this topic than others. First of all, do you own any of this stuff? Uh, I Personally? do own some Bitcoin. You do? Yep. Did you get it early? Pretty early on. Yeah. Pretty early? Yeah. But you, you don't like Bitcoin. You don't think it is. I mean, even though you think that digitalization and uh, uh, fintech is going to mean that more and more people have actively been banked, so to speak, yeah. you, don't, you don't think Bitcoin is really the way it's going to happen? So I think what's happening with cryptocurrencies and blockchain right now is a grand experiment that's happening right now. And if it's successful, it could be one of the greatest shifts in how you think about the transfer of value and distributed trust. And that's what blockchain is about. But the cryptocurrencies on top of that right now, whether it be a Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Ripple, any of those, Right now, they're quite volatile. They go up and down, sometimes 10% in a day. If you're a retailer and your margin is 2 to 5%, you can't even think and you it. accept Bitcoin and goes down 10% that day, you've lost money on every transaction that you've made. And so for something to be a legitimate currency, um, it needs stability on it. Really, today, Bitcoin and these others are more like commodities. It's more like trading in gold. But the underlying blockchain protocol actually has the chance to fundamentally change the way we think about trust type of applications, contracts, uh, payments, that kind of thing. And I think that could be one of the biggest breakthroughs that we've seen. But again, it's an experiment. I give that maybe a 50 percent shot of happening, maybe a 20 percent shot that the whole thing collapses. Um, but if it does succeed, uh, it could bring massive change. Dan, I want to thank you very much for being with us, and make sure you stop by next time you're in New York, all right? Thank you so much, Becky. Appreciate it. See hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.